This is Ash from All Things Dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hits and tips of dentistry. Well, today I wanted to talk about um, why is my tooth, why is your tooth getting darker after you had a root canal? Now, um, Angie Flavors, Angie's Flavors, had asked a question, is it normal after a root canal my tooth is getting darker? And I was thinking like, uh, I was wondering if it's a front or back tooth, and she said it was a front tooth. So I was like, you know what, let's make a video about it. Why not? So. Um, if you haven't gotten your gear guide, I've got, um, this is the gear guide, you know, go ahead and click here, you can download it. It just goes over all the practical, simple, minimalist gear I use to practice my root canals every day. And do, go ahead and check out our Facebook or my Facebook, whatever you want to call it. There's a bunch of stuff on here. Um, it might have some links to other stuff you may find useful. So let's talk about, Angie, let's talk about your tooth and anybody else who has this question. If this is your, the crown in your mouth, and this is the root in your jawbone, and this is the nerve. So depending on when you had your root canal or what reason you had your root canal, uh, the end result is pretty much the same. The nerve is taken out of the tooth. So we make a small hole through the back of the tooth, and we, well, if only we could suck the pulp out, uh, but we don't. We actually use these, you know, ro um, these, I live in Canada, so we use these eye flexible ice auger things to drill the, uh, the nerve out. Anyways, what happens is sometimes, Let's go down to here. What happens is this little space right here is where the nerve, so that this is where the nerve canal is, your root canal, and then this is where the pulp is or the nerve. But there's also pulp tissue that sits way up in these little things called pulp horns. So sometimes, and I'm guilty of this, you want to make your axis as small because you want to remove as a small amount of tooth structure as possible from your root canal during your root canal procedure. But what happens is some of these little pieces are left over. So let me show you here, I've got a couple cases. We'll walk through it real quick. Excuse me. So this is actually a course that I made um, and uh, I'm thinking about reusing it. Let's go ahead and take a look here. And what we're gonna do, so this is the back of the tooth and this is a small little hole that I've made. And you know, ideally the regular pulp, the regular access size should be kind of triangular. And you'll see why in a second. What happens is, is that we're into where the nerve space is. So this space right here is literally where you're looking at right here, okay? So then we take these files and go down, but we make a small hole in, and we try not to go, you know, for those who are watching this because you are doing dentistry and you're brand new or whatnot, I, we tend not to do this type of access. We wanna come straight up and down. Because, you know, early in my career, and you're gonna see in one of the cases, not because of this type of access, but what happens is sometimes you miss the pulp chamber say the pulp chamber is calcified, you miss it and almost go right through the buccal piece. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you see this, not right now. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna see, this is the ideal shape, and that's really where you wanna go with. Um, in this case, it was instructed to us, we're trying our smallest techniques. So after we do our root canal, and you'll see what's going on, but this is kind of, what happens is, this is you're gonna see this little piece right there, so this is gutter percha that we put to seal up your tooth. It's a little rubber carrot we put in there to seal your tooth. You see how there's some caught right here? Well, this little area here actually correlates to this little area right there. That, in a, where the calcified you know, tooth is. Oh, that's not what I want. Where well, the calcified tooth is. And what do I mean by calcified? Well, the pulp chamber has protected itself. So it's made like the Great Wall of China, kind of growing not growing, but receding the pulp size itself. What happens is there's these little spaces underneath. You can't see them or they're very tiny and pulp tissue re stays in there. And what happens is if you keep, as a clinician, if you keep your, oh, look at that. There it says, buccal veil of pulp tissue. Need to remove with ultrasonic or slow round burst. So what happens is, is that this tooth was extracted so it was long dead, but in a fresh tooth, say you had, you know, you had an emergency, you needed your tooth to be root canaled, God love you if you had to, not the most pleasant procedure. But look at all this pulp tissue that's coming out of under there. So what happens is when you have your black, you have a root canal and you and the clinician misses this, and it's very easy to miss it because if, unless you have high medication um, and you've, you know, you've been doing this for a while, look at how, I mean, this is at six times medication with a microscope. It's a very thin, less than the, probably the width of a hair underneath here between you know the front and back of the tooth. And this is all that pulp tissue. So what happens is if that's left in there and say it's a new tooth, it tends to darken. Look at, you'll see all that pulp tissue removing, getting removed. And 
that's all nerve tissue. And what happens is, again, this tooth is extracted, so it's not going to turn dark. But in a regular tooth, you know, in a live tooth, vital tooth, it, you know, when you get bruised, for the best way I can describe it is if you get bruised, it starts to turn dark. And what happens is, in this case, the blood, the blood cells and the blood products break down and darken your tooth. So that, in a long description, is really why I wish I was being sponsored by Munzbers because I love them, but I'm not. That in a nutshell, you can see there's more of that pulp tissue. So in a nutshell, in a long story, uh, this is why you're most likely, it's not 100% of the time, but most likely what happens is that pulp tissue is left in the what we call the pulp horns, and it's really hard to get out, and it turns dark. So you're going to ask, what is the solution? Well, one is to go back into your tooth and remove and try to see if removing it can remove that stain. Hopefully it hasn't stained what we call the dentin. This is enamel on your tooth and then this is the dentin. Kind of, uh, you know, it's, in the way I describe it to my patients is that this is really hard tissue. Well, you see it, it's a crown. And then this tissue underneath called the dentin, it's made up of like a billion little straws, like little, little straws. So what happens is it's it can sense, because it has little nerve endings in it, it can sense what happens in the tooth. So, you, you know, you get a cavity and you have a problem with, sugar or whatnot it's these little nerve endings that feel in here but what happens is because they're billion little straws they can also suck up stain so you know if the dentin stain you might have to do an internal bleach and I don't I don't have this we can do another video on that no problem but this all that tissue right there that you saw again is all pulp tissue now I had actually completed this root canal and gone back and just as I was finishing it like you know this is one of the real reasons why um, and the article, the literature supports, the peer-reviewed literature supports that you don't really need to make a small, tiny little axis hole because it doesn't matter in anterior teeth in terms of resistance to fracture. Um, you can make it as small as you want, but the problem is you miss all this stuff. Another way you can do it, so what I'm using a drill, the Munz drills burrs to get it out to remove that pulp tissue, but I'm also, you can use ultrasonics as well. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, it's just using ultrasonics just to remove this. And again, this is an extracted tooth so I can get all these crazy angles you can see it. So what I'm doing here is I'm removing all that pulp tissue remnants. And I have to remove, you know, this is the reason why we don't like to do this because we're removing uh, tooth structure. But the problem is that if you don't remove tooth structure, it's really hard to get to. So in a real case, thank you so much for joining me. If you want to continue uh, in a live case, I've got a case right now. One of the things I just did want to ask, you know, those who are subscribers or who watch, what I'm watching right now, what I'm thinking about doing is creating a Patreon page. And the reason why is I've got, you know, a whole bunch of videos up and I really want to create uh, better videos. I want to inc better my equipment. So I was thinking about using my, a Patreon page to provide extended long v versions of videos, but also a number of, like this video here, it's part of a course that I want to upload. And I'm, you know, putting the comments, if you, you know, it's a really, it's a root canal course and I want to provide it so the world can see it. So it's not just like, limited to people who can afford it. It's kind of like for everybody and it's a decent price using Patreon. So it'll go through pretty much every tooth in the mouth. I'm just slowly creating it. I have an older course that I put together. Uh, this new course will go through every tooth in the mouth in terms of uh, access, anatomy, everything. So, you know, if you'd be interested in something like that, let me know because I kind of, you know, I just kind of want to gauge what's going on. So if you're still with me, I really appreciate it. Here's a case that I completed a couple of years ago. And actually, I, I completed a root canal. This actually is a, an OHL player, Ontario Hockey League player. Uh, it's his brother who got hit in the face with a puck. So the younger brother got smashed in the face with a stick a year before. And then his older brother shows up. Super nice kids. And I think this guy's about 18. He broke his tooth. You can see there's an orthodontic wire there. Uh, and the clinician at the time elected to... Uh, crown the tooth rather than place a composite restoration. I don't know why, but it is what it is. So this is the root canal after uh, we did. This is the root canal after we did the root canal. And the reason why that I did the root canal is because after he did the crown, obviously the tooth is going to be pretty sensitive. So did the root canal, and let's just get to pulpectomy. There we go. So let's start. So this is the tooth here. This is tooth number one one. Uh, the wire was sectioned after the temporary crown was placed and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a root canal through that tooth. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm just doing an access with a number, actually a number four, number two round burr. We're just getting into that tooth. And I don't like, when I get into these teeth, I don't like to 
So I'm using, I don't like to get go right across. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. I don't like to, my concern is always making, removing too much dentin from this, from the buckle side of the tooth. So what I do is I kind of go straight up and down. In this case, I didn't need to because it's a wide open pulp chamber. As you can see here, it's really wide, but I'm trying to conserve as much tooth structure as possible, especially for the tooth. Now it's fractured. You can see it's a large pulp chamber. And what I'm thinking in, the, in advance of this, doing completing this tooth is that we're gonna have a large apex. So I'm gonna probably have to use a large hand file to get final shaping to make sure I remove all of that pulp tissue from the apical, apical third. So let's just keep going here. So I'm gonna use my Munzburr just to pop into that, just kind of brush into that pulp chamber. Let's just keep going here. We'll fast forward. I think I got tired of the, of the, uh, the Munzburr. He felt a little, oh yeah, so what was happening here? Um, one of the cases I need to talk about it, you know, if the patient's symptomatic, what do you do? Well, this is a great situation here where the patient was symptomatic. I did cold test after the tooth was anesthetized. So the patient was numb. I cold tested to make sure he wasn't feeling anything. And sure enough, he felt something afterwards. So I gave a little bit of a PDL just with my LigmaJet. If you don't know what a LigmaJet is, you need to, you know, I could show you. Super helpful. So we're just slowly making my way. And I'm actually, I'm going very daintily because I want to preserve as much tooth structure as possible by providing, uh, making sure that we're, we're trying to pervert, preserve as much tooth structure as possible, but also get through the root canal properly. I think that's the best way to, to say it. So what's happened here is you can see my, my rubber dam secondary seal has fallen off and I'm going to replace that. Today, what I'd be using is ore seal. Um, I've done a split dam technique. But what I was using then is uh, or Opal Dam. It fell off, it normally falls off, and that's why I kind of switched to or Seal. So we're just getting into that tooth. I'm gonna use my Endo Explorer just to pop a hole. And remember, he was symptomatic as I was accessing. So I'm gonna to try to make as small a hole as possible because if the patient feels it, and this is fairly rare because the PDL usually nails it right away. So let me step back one, real quick, is that after anesthetize, I'll do my infiltrations, I'll do a palatal, I'll do a cold test because the tooth was vital. 85 to 90% of the time, that's good. Like we're set to make sure we have proper anesthesia. But there's always the weird case, like in this case, the patient was symptomatic irreversible pulpitis with symptomatic apical periodontitis. So, you know, sometimes that's not sufficient. So I'll do a PDL with my LigmaJet and a 30, a small, a 30 gauge extra short needle. And then what I'm going to do is just to make sure I, and you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. I'll make a small little, just a little puncture there into the pulp. So this is the pulp. And if the patient feels anything immediately, they'll feel, normally they'll feel it when I do that. And if it, if they do feel something, I can place my extra small, extra short, whatever you got, but a 30 gauge needle into the pulp. And what that does is because it's such a small little entrance into the pulp, it allows me to create a lot of back pressure because pressure anesthesia is what's gonna make our pulp become numb, like numb to the earth. And you gotta think about it, it's gonna be pressure versus the standard acid base. I'm not gonna get into chemistry because I'm not that smart in it. But in regular soft tissue, we work from, we inject acid, you know, an acid form of our anesthetic. We allow our, we need our soft tissue to change it into a, you know, a base. So it goes through that acid base change and it needs a lot of soft tissue to do that. In our pulp, there's not a lot of soft tissue, pulp tissue to do that switch over. I mean, it might happen a little bit from going from acid to base, but we really rely on the pressure. So if we keep a small hole, we can place that tip in there and get a lot of pressure. But in this case, boom, we're good. So what I'm gonna do now, and you may not do that, but I found it's fairly tech, you know, I love, there's one of the reasons why, if you're gonna ask me about this, I've removed the tape, yes. It's for an indicator, it's not, you can't, you know, the, um, we can go into this. I've removed the tape, it's just for an indicator, so it's all clean now, because I was asked that a long time ago. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go right in with my wave of gold. So in this case, because I wanted to, I want to get as much, rid of much pulp tissue as possible, I want to make sure I don't touch that buccal surface of the, of the tooth, because I don't wanna thin that out any more than it already is, because the tooth is prepped for a crown. And I just want to make sure, I want to have a good feeling. I'm going to go right in just to get rid of some of that pulp tissue. And what that pulp tissue removal actually helps is because the patient is asymptomatic right now or numb, comfortably numb, uh, it allows me to get it in there and get that pulp tissue out before the, 
that any of that anesthesia wears off. So that's really what I would recommend. So there's a number of reasons why I do that. I know this video is dragging on, my apologies. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my endozebra real quick. I'm gonna open up that axis a bit. Now we're trying to keep it, we're trying to keep it small, but we're also trying to get rid of the pulp tissue because here you can see it. That's that pulp tissue that I'm talking about. And especially Angie, if you're still with me, I appreciate it. And there's that lip. So if we just removed all that and I didn't remove, like you saw in the other video, some of these pulp horns, um, likely if there wasn't a crown going on this tooth, you would see the same thing that you might be experiencing. So I'm gonna get my working length here. I'm not gonna rely on a 10 file for my working length because it is a fairly large apex. Uh, I'm gonna use a brooch. We're gonna speed right through this to try to get rid of some of that tissue or some of that pulp tissue. I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna place my secondary seal just to make sure we keep our caustic irrigation uh, disinfectants out of the oral cavity and all the bacteria in out of the tooth. We're gonna get our working lengths with our apex locator. I'm gonna use a larger file that's a 15, we'll go up to even a larger file. But really what I wanted to show you was We've got our working length. We're going to get rid of all that pulp tissue. We're going to irrigate this out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look for any of those pulp tissue remnants because we want to make sure that we don't have that same problem. Because look at the size of that pulp tissue. That pulp chamber is fairly large. And you can see some of those remnants just a little bit right there. So I'm going to take that slow round burr or my Munz burr, or it might be even high. Yeah, I'm going to use my Munz burr. And just before I do this, I want to show you before I've touched it with any burr, you see how thin that already is. And this is one of the reasons why, if you're still with me, I appreciate it. This is one of the reasons why, if you're brand new, I really recommend, rather than accessing your tooth like this and missing this pulp chamber, especially if it's reduced, coming almost straight up and down. Because as you can see, this is what you're going to be seeing. And I saw this many times when I was a brand new dentist without a crown prep. You're like, whoa, look at that green. And I want to show you this because I didn't touch that from the inside. It's That's from you know that's how thin the tooth gets when you're prepping it. This might have been over prepped. Uh, but what I need to do in terms of making sure we have a successful root canal is make sure we get rid of all that pulp tissue. You can see it's pink. You see all that pink tissue coming out from under there? And I'm being very judicious in removal of that tissue. I prefer using round burrs because uh, it's kind of a headache to get my ultrasonic instrument out just for this. And now you can see, look at how thin that is. So that's why we really recommend for clinicians, this is another topic for another day, is coming straight down in terms of your access rather than coming perpendicular. Because there's always, I'm just kind of, I'm trying to get a good shot for the, for the video, that's what I'm doing here. So it's removing, making sure we remove all that pulp tissue from those pulp horns and then from the entire tooth. So we'll just speed along here, we're making sure everything's cleaned out. And now you can see the size of the hand files, I can't remember, it was a couple of years ago. Size of the hand files are actually getting a lot larger. So I'm using my Wave and Gold Large, and that's a 70 because it's green. Uh, I need to open up and make an apical stop to a 70. So, you know, if you've ever, and this is why using larger hand files is critical in these anterior teeth because you need to, you know, a Wave and Gold, that's what the system I use, a Wave and Gold, or whatever system you use, you know, usually they stop at a 45, 50, 55. You're going to need hand files to make sure you debride that apical portion and get your, remove all that pulpal tissue from the walls. So I'm going to go to my working length. I'm going to do a balanced force technique and I'm going to pull up along the sides of the walls. I'm looking for debris on the apical portion of my file. I can't remember if I go to a 70 or 80. You can see my hand, my irrigating needle is bent to the proper, you know, to a couple mils short of my working length. And then here you can see I'm using like a 10 mil syringe. And that's really useful because then my dental system, let's get this out of the way, my dental system doesn't have to keep refilling this and we can just keep irrigating, irrigating. Because what's gonna win the game in terms of root canals? Irrigation. So we're using our irrigant not only to kill bacteria, there are probably no bacteria in here, but we're trying to use irrigant, in this case, to dissolve that vital bulb tissue, make sure we get success. And you know, ultimately, win the day for the root canal. So you can see here, we pretty much eliminated all the pulp horns. And we're just doing our final irrigation series. Yada, yada, yada. And then we're gonna take our, take our cone. So as you can see here, it's cut off. So what I've done is I've actually cut off. Uh, you can do it two ways. You can either kind of arbitrarily do it. You can arbitrarily measure it and then cut it. You can use a gutta gauge. There's so many different ways you can do it. But the point is, is that you can see how large that is. 
because I was expecting, because he's a young kid, 18 years old. If you're 18, you're not young, I get it. Uh, but if you're, you know, if you want to make sure you're debriding an apical portion, make sure you try to create an apical stop and then measure. And that's our rubber cone, that's our rubber carrot. Uh, Angie, if you're still with us. So what I'm doing here actually, I might as well just keep going through because we're almost at you know, 55 minutes. What I'm doing here actually is you can see the timer. We, we need minimum of 20 minutes for, I'm using full strength sodium hypochlorite, for 20 minutes for this to dissolve any vital pulp tissue. And remember the dentin actually neutralizes some of the, of the uh, sodium hypochlorite as well. So what I do in these cases, if it's a, a central and it's been pretty quick, I'm going to actually leave a little bit of vital, a little, little bit of sodium hypochlorite in the apical third of the tooth and then place my gutta percha and then take my working length radiograph. What that does is it gives me an extra five minutes, roughly five minutes. In this case, we were using phosphor plates, so we had to go and run from the operatory to go and run it through, the, get the digital, digital um, image. So it gives us about five minutes. I'm taking the radiograph here, and then we'll go, and then we'll finish the case. So short of that, I'm going to finish it right there. And if you want me to finish the case, you know, put it in the comments. But thank you so much. Let me know about the, uh, hopefully, Angie, that was really helpful. I know it dragged on forever, but this is really for you and others that have the same question. And if you want me to put up that, you know, if you have interest, I want to kind of see if there's some interest in putting up a root canal course on Patreon, and then uh, we'll see how it goes. So thank you so much for your time. I'm grateful for your question. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.